Biomechanics of kicking a soccer ball. The current form of soccer started in England in the mid-19th century, but other versions of the game began much earlier. The first known example of a team game occurred in old Mesoamerican cultures over 3,000 years ago. And this game included a ball made from rock, which symbolized the sun, and the captain of the losing team was sacrificed to the gods. The first known ball game was played in China in the 3rd and 2nd centuries BC, and this game was played with a round ball on a square area. In ancient Greece, the ball was made from leather and filled with hair, and not until the 7th century was there any documentation of soccer balls filled with air. In ancient Rome, games weren't played in big arenas, rather they were common for military exercises. In the 12th century, England developed the foundation for the game of soccer that is played today. However, this form was much more violent than today and sometimes forbidden, but adapted and developed in public schools into a sport to be played. There is no clear distinction between football and rugby until the first football association in 1863 in London, where the two were separated at this meeting, as well as a standardization of the size and weight of the ball and the rule that carrying the ball with the hands wasn't allowed. The specific movement that we chose to research is kicking a soccer ball, particularly the instep kick. This type of kick involves planting the support leg next to the ball and striking the ball with the inside of the other foot. The support leg serves as the axis of rotation for the swinging leg, and the greatest distance in kicking is determined by the player's efficiency in transferring kinetic energy from the ball or from the body to the ball. This photo shows a soccer player planting her support leg next to the ball and getting ready to swing the dominant leg through to kick the ball. This image shows the different phases of kicking a soccer ball. It begins with the approach towards the ball and then generation of force to swing the leg backwards before the swing through to kick the ball. As the leg swings towards the ball in the downward motion, angular velocity increases and then is transferred to the ball at foot contact. Once the ball is kicked, the leg follows through all the way through the swing phrase in order to slow down. Okay, so we're going to talk about the physics concepts of impulse and momentum. And so momentum is a quantity of linear motion, which is the mass times velocity. And then impulse is the effect of a force over time. So applying an impulse to an object or a body causes a change in momentum of that body. And then if the mass remains constant, it's going to cause a change in velocity. And so impulse and momentum are related um, in that they're equal to each other. So um, force times time equals a mass times a change in velocity. And so in this image, you can see um, the relationship between the two. So the soccer ball receives an impulse, and then the impulse is added to the initial momentum of that ball. And then, so the change in momentum is equal to the impulse um, that is acted on the ball. And then after the impulse, um, the ball has a final momentum. And so we are able to produce the same change in momentum, which is mass times a change in velocity, by producing a large force over a short amount of time or a small force over a longer amount of time. Um, and so the impulse momentum during the kick, um, kicking of the soccer ball, um, the momentum from the player's leg is transferred to the ball. And since the change in momentum is equal to impulse, the greater the change in momentum, the greater the impulse was on the ball. And so to increase momentum during a soccer kick, the, since the mass value of the ball remains constant, the velocity of the leg swing would have to increase. And so the higher the speed of the foot at the point of contact with the ball, the greater the speed that the ball will have um, when it leaves the ground. And so the velocity of the ball depends on the velocity of the leg doing the kick. Faster leg speed means um, far, the farther the ball will travel. And so this relates to Newton's first law of motion, which is the law of inertia, which shows that an object at rest needs an outside force to change um, the object from stationary to being in motion. And if the foot is swung through with a high speed over a short amount of time to contact the ball, a greater amount of force will be produced and a greater impulse based off of the impulse momentum relationship. And this would also in turn cause a change in momentum of the ball. The next mechanical concept present in kicking a soccer ball is the ground reaction forces. A ground reaction force is a reaction to the push applied to the ground by the individual. 
and this is seen in kicking a soccer ball when the player plants his or her support leg next to the ball. Support for the kicking leg results from the plant leg generating high ground reaction forces, which are in three different planes of motion, vertical, medial, lateral, and anterior, posterior. And the vertical force generated can vary between 1.9 and 2.4 times the player's body weight, whereas the medial lateral forces vary between 0.5 and 1.2 times the player's body weight. Ground reaction forces have been found to be highest in the vertical plane, followed by the medial lateral plane and then the anterior posterior plane. The figure on the right shows that the vertical ground reaction force is much higher than the medial lateral and anterior posterior ground reaction forces, as well as how the forces taper off at ball contact. It was found that players positioned over the top of the ball produce the hardest kick. Additionally, low peak anterior posterior ground reaction forces contribute to increased ball speed, and the position of the plant leg from the ball and the ground reaction forces generated by the plant leg affect the resulting ball speed and path. Um, so the next concept is angular velocity, and angular velocity is the rate of change of angular position, and it's a vector quantity, so the direction of motion has to be specified, and you must determine if it's positive or negative. And so if um, the thing moving is going clockwise, then it's a negative mo movement, and if it's counterclockwise, then the movement is positive. So the angular velocity during the kick is very important for the performance of the kick and so the, during the backswing the thighs angular velocity is minimal and then the shank velocity which is the lower leg is negative due to the backwards clockwise movement of the leg and so the beginning of the forward swing phase of the leg the thighs angular velocity is positive and the shank angular velocity is negative and so the shank moves backwards until maximal re knee flexion is reached and then as the kick motion continues the thigh and the shank move forward and the thigh's angular velocity reaches its peak value around 516 to 573 degrees per second right before the knee begins its extension and then at this point this is where the thigh's angular velocity is equal to the shank's angular velocity making the knee the total knee joint's angular velocity is zero and then so during knee extension the thigh's angular velocity decreases and shank angular velocity increases linearly until um, the contact of the ball and then once the foot contacts um, with the ball that's when there's the maximum shank and foot angular velocity and so in order to achieve um, maximum swing velocity of the leg um, you have to have an approach with an angle and so the maximum swing velocity um, is achieved with an approach of an angle of 30 degrees and then the maximum ball velocity was achieved at an appro uh, approach angle of 45 degrees, and so an optimal range would be to have an approach angle of the leg between 30 to 45 degrees. And then approaching the ball at an angle allows for um, the maximal swing velocity to occur, and the leg that's doing the kick is able to get the foot further underneath the ball, making better contact, and then producing greater ball velocities. And then this um, image pretty much reiterates what I just talked about on the previous slide, where during the backswing, um, you can see that the shank's velocity is at its minimum and it's negative and then it increases as the leg progresses through the swing of the kick and then reaches its maximum angular velocity um, at the point of ball impact at the end of phase three on the figure and then the thigh velocity is also minimal during the back swing and then increases as the leg swings through reaching its peak angular velocity right before um, the knee extension and at the beginning of phase three on the figure. In order to produce the most effective soccer kick, a player must put all three of these concepts together, beginning with planning the support leg directly next to the ball and positioning the body above the ball, which allows the player to generate high vertical ground reaction forces. And then contacting the ball when the shank is at its peak angular velocity will help to generate the most momentum to the ball to create the most effective kick that the player can do.